Good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, usmlevideos.net. Once again, welcome to our videos. You are always welcome to visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you. And uh, tonight I want to briefly discuss status epilepticus. What are the main causes of this particular medical emergency and how do you manage it? How do you terminate an attack? Those are the issues we are going to deal. First of all, what is status epilepticus? There are two ways to define it. Number one, a prolonged seizure lasting 5 to 15 minutes or a continuous or multiple seizures without intervening periods of consciousness. Either it could be a prolonged seizure lasting like 5 to 15 minutes on one hand and on the other hand it could be multiple seizures without the patient ever gaining his consciousness. Now let us see the most common causes. It could be idiopathic epilepsy. This is very, very common in patients younger than 25 years of age. Head trauma, an acute trauma like uh, depressor skull fracture or subdural hematoma might present as status epilepticus. Then stroke, particularly hemorrhagic stroke. Then a primary or metastatic tumor in the brain, they might manifest as status epilepticus. Then we need to think about metabolic causes. Number one, cerebral hypoperfusion or simply hypoxia. When our patient has cardiopulmonary arrest or cardiac dysarrhythmias or severe hypotension, they may present with cerebral hypoperfusion. Then meningitis, encephalitis, due to causes like bacterial, viral, fungal, parasitic, they may present with status epilepticus. Then hyponatremia, whenever the sodium concentration is less than 120 milliequivalents per liter or often less than 110 milliequivalents per liter, that's a precursor for status epilepticus. Then hypoglycemia could present whenever the blood glucose level less than 40 milligrams per deciliter, especially in a diabetic patient who uh, is taking excessive amounts of insulin without adequately replenishing his glucose sources. That's a precursor for hypoglycemia, which might lead to status epilepticus. Then we need to think about hyperosmolality. Whenever the serum osmolality more than 300 milliosmoles per liter, that could result in status epilepticus. Then hypertensive encephalopathy, uremic encephalopathy, hepatic encephalopathy, eclamptogenic toxemia in pregnant patients, and drug overdose, drug withdrawal febrile convulsions in children less than five years old, hyperthermia. These are the main causes that could present with uh, status epilepticus. Now let us consider the management. You see, you must first protect the airway. The ABC, airway breathing circulation, is the first point you must remember. That's very, very important. Before you think about phenytoin, ativan, dizepam, you should think about stabilizing the airway of the patient. That's a very, very important point and uh, you would be tested on this point, definitely. After you protect the airway, you should think about inserting an intravenous catheter because the differential diagnosis is so vast you need to find the glucose, electrolytes, and uh, magnesium, calcium, hepatic, renal function tests, blood gases, toxicology screen, and uh, anticonvulsant level. So you need to draw blood and you need to put insert in intravenous catheter for that effect. Then 
always give, try to think about thiamine deficiency because whenever you come with a patient with a status epilepticus who also has a history of alcoholism, he might have deficiency of thiamine. In such patients, you must always first give thiamine before you give glucose. So, when you suspect hypoglycemia, give glucose like uh, 50 ml of 50 percent dextrose solution or 5 minutes, just give it, but give thiamine whenever you suspect uh, thiamine deficiency. And then the first line agents, second line agents and third line agents. What are the first line agents to treat status epilepticus? You should think about benzodiazepines either lorazepam commonly known as ativan or diazepam. Lorazepam it is uh, it has longer duration of action than diazepam that is why it is the treatment of choice and uh, diazepam can also be given rectally or endotracheally through endotracheal tube or intraosseously. So, you try Ativan IV, if it does not work, you can think of diazepam. And uh, if you cannot give diazepam, you can give metazolam. Metazolam can be given intramuscularly. Then the second line agents. Among second line agents, you should think about phenytoin and phosphenytoin. You give an infusion of phenytoin. It is uh, but the problem is it can precipitate cardiac arrhythmias and it can also cause hypotension. That is why we came up with phosphenytoin. Phosphenytoin it is better than phenytoin because it can be administered faster than phenytoin and it can also be given intramuscularly. That is why phosphenytoin is better than phenytoin. Then third line agents, phenobarbital. You can give phenobarbital if uh, lorazepam or diazepam or second line agents like phenytoin or phosphenytoin does not work. And if these medications do not work, it is called refractory status epilepticus. Whenever patient has refractory status epilepticus, there are certain drugs you can still give to the patient like metazolam or propofol. Propofol it is like a non-barbiturate. It is a non-barbiturate sedative hypnotic. It helps to sedate the patient and it can terminate the attack of status epilepticus. If propofol does not work and if you cannot intubate the patient because metazolam and propofol, pentobarbital, these medications require intubation of the patient. Whenever you cannot intubate the patient, but you still end up with refractory status epilepticus, you can use valproic acid. Valproic acid, it is uh, uh, very safe to give. It is uh, uh, can be given without using, uh, a, uh, without intubating the patient actually. So, those are the main things we need to do. After once you stabilize the patient, you should always rule out meningitis. If the patient has favor or neocal rigidity, you should do a lumbar puncture in order to uh, rule out meningitis. If the patient has hyperthermia, you need to deal with it. And you also need to do some um, blood gases to rule out uh, metabolic acidosis. Most of these patients will have metabolic acidosis and uh, that has to be corrected. So, basically that is about status epilepticus. As always, you are welcome to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net for more videos where we discuss the most important points of USML examination. Thank you. Have a good night.